Hello everyone, Craig Ripley here. Welcome to another edition of Living Off the Slab. Now today what I'm gonna do is answer some questions about this, my new Bush Tech trailer. In particular, a lot of people wanted to know why I chose this trailer over a lot of the other ones that are out there on the market. So before I actually answer that question, let me get into what the cost of this trailer was. Right, the base price was $39.99, and then of course you add on extras on top of that. For $39.99, you get this factory black. If you want a custom color, you're looking at another $875. And of course, if you want pinstripes and two tones, things like that, then the cost goes up from there. For my purposes, the basic black was just fine. As you can see, I blacked out the entire trailer and I think it looks great with the color combination on my BMW K1600 GTL. It picks up those black accents of the bags and the fenders and it just carries it back into the trailer very nicely. Now let me point out that after I bought this trailer, in fact, just a couple of weeks after I bought it, the base price on these units went up to $4,400. So if you're gonna pick one up now, Again, you're gonna start off at that $4,400 number. Along with the trailer, I bought a tongue weight scale, an air pump for the shocks, which we'll talk about in a little bit. I bought a floor mat for the inside of the trailer, a spare tire cover, and the floor jack stand. So right now, I don't have my spare tire and cover. That's gonna be coming, hopefully, in the near future. Like most companies out there right now, Bush Tech has been running into some issues with their supply chain. So they didn't have any of the spare wheel assemblies in stock. So again, I'm being patient. I'll wait till after the first of the year, and then I'll start making a pain in the butt of myself because I'm gonna want that by early spring. So in addition to those trailer parts, you also need some parts for your hitch. Right, you've got a hitch that goes on the bike, you have three pieces of the wiring harness that you need to purchase, as well as a hitch pin, a hitch head, a lock for the hitch head and for the hitch pin, right, as well as a couple of other things. So all of that adds up. The number for me ended up being 527806. Now I did have a friend of mine that offered to allow me to use his trailer and even take it out on the road with me. But I was a little hesitant to take somebody else's trailer and go on a long trip with it. Also, all of the hitch uh, equipment, the hitch and the wiring harness and everything, that ends up running close to $1,000, right? So I figured, well, if I'm in for a penny, I'm in for a pound. If I'm gonna spend $1,000 on a hitch to get it on the bike so I can test drive a trailer, I might as well just go all the way and pick up the trailer that I want. So I did also look at trying to pick up a used trailer. But I think you're gonna find, if you look out there, the Bush Techs hold their value very well. I could save maybe a grand or so off the cost of the trailer, but I was also going to have to paint it. Like I found a maroon one, I found a blue one, and I guess I could have not been picky and again chose those. But again, for me, I would rather just spend the extra money and get exactly what I wanted. And speaking of used, if I do decide that I don't like this trailer and I decide to sell it, well, as I said, Bush Techs seem to hold their value really well, but also I got it in this basic black so that it'll match pretty much any bike setup out there. So I figured that'll probably be a little bit easier if I decide I don't want the trailer. However, I don't think that's gonna be the case. So, all right, so now let's get to why I chose the Bush Tech over all of its other competitors, especially when a lot of them are less expensive. Well, in a single word, that would be quality. Right? If I am gonna pull a lot of weight behind my bike, I wanna know that I have the very best trailer that I can get that is out there on the market. And from my research and talking to owners, well, that is Bush Tech. Right, they have the best trailer, the best uh, suspension system, which we'll talk about in a minute, and can the build quality is really excellent. 
Now I mentioned suspension just uh, a couple of seconds ago, and that is the main reason that I decided to get the Bushtech, and that is the air ride suspension system that comes on this trailer. Unlike most of the other trailers on the market, you can actually adjust the suspension to accommodate the weight of the trailer and the load that you are carrying. And it's known to have a no bounce system. But if you watch this little demonstration video that Bush Tech puts out there, you can see how there is literally no bounce in this trailer once you set the suspension up properly. And I can attest to that, coming back a thousand miles from Tennessee on the highway and hitting some pretty rough potholes up here in New England, all right, the trailer had literally no bounce in it at all. And we know that trailer bounce can definitely be a problem. In fact, one of the big don't do's is to pull a lot of these other trailers out there with no weight in the trailer. Because then you have a very stiff suspension that is set up to pull a 100 or 200 pound load and then it can bounce when you're going down the road and it's empty. Well, with the bush tech, again, that is just not the case. You set the suspension up for the weight that you have in there, including an empty trailer, and it works just great. And also, as I mentioned, the quality and the workmanship on these trailers is, again, just top notch. And personally, I think they're the best looking trailer out there on the market. They really go well with the modern motorcycle design. Right. And while that isn't the most important thing in the world, right, it sure doesn't hurt when you've spent a lot of money to make your motorcycle look good. You also want to have a good looking trailer. All right, so now let's take a little bit and go look inside. Internally, the Quantum Sport trailer offers 24 cubic feet of storage capacity. The trailer weighs around 140 pounds with a gross vehicle weight of 350. So you have about 210 pounds of load capacity. And I don't expect to ever go anywhere near that. If I do, well, you feel free to tell me I am overpacking because I will be. Now, one thing I did notice on my trip home from Tennessee is that when I had a small amount of luggage in there, I think I maybe had 30 pounds of luggage, well, it would have a tendency to slide to the back of the trailer. And while that didn't really cause any problem, I could definitely tell that uh, between our stops, I could tell that the weight had shifted to the rear of the trailer by the way that the trailer handled. Right. Again, it wasn't bad, but again, I could tell the difference. And so I would move the weight back up between the wheels. Right. So when I got home, I decided, well, I need something to address this issue. So what I did to solve this problem is I built myself this little modular kind of rack system or partitioning system inside the trailer. It's still a work in progress, but it's coming along very nicely. This is going to allow me to make sure that most of the weight stays over the wheels, right? And then also it's gonna allow me to tie things down if necessary, right? I've even built a kind of a faux floor, that is a decking system that goes on top of this. So here's the floor installed, and as you can see, it just gives me said, a little extra uh, help when I'm trying to isolate some of this load. And again, I built it as a modular system so I can use whatever pieces I need based upon the load that I'm carrying. Now, one thing you may have noticed is that I did not buy the cooler pack for this trailer. I question whether it was a good idea to have a potential 30 or 40 pounds out there on the tongue of the trailer. I know a lot of people do that, uh, that it works just fine. The guys at Bush Tech said it's really no problem, but I don't know. It didn't sound like a good idea for me anyway, because I'm a first time trailer user. And also I wanted to keep my load down as much as possible. So I would rather have the cooler inside if possible. So here is what I did with that modular system that I put together. The idea is that I could leave this front section of my second floor out and I can put my cooler right in here. And I think an Arctic 30 can cooler, a soft cooler will fit just fine right there. Now, another question that I got was why I decided to go with a cargo trailer like this instead of going with something like the Mini Mate or the Timeout trailer, that is a camping trailer. 
So now I did look into those trailers. In fact, I have a friend who has a mini mate and he is very happy with it. But he does a lot of solo camping in that little trailer. Right? For me, if I want to take my wife along with me, that just wouldn't work. There just isn't enough room for two larger people to sleep in that trailer. In fact, the guy told me his wife would not go along with him uh, camping like that. Right, So that was going to be something that I just couldn't work around. The timeout trailer has, of course, a larger bed. It's got a queen-size bed in it, so that probably would have worked for us, even though a queen-size bed sometimes gets pretty tight. We use a king, right? Uh, still, that probably would have worked. However, then I started looking at the weight of these trailers. The Mini Mate, for example, goes at 250 pounds. Again, then plus you're gonna put equipment and things inside it. The timeout trailer, well, if you get the deluxe version, which I was probably going to get, that's 385 pounds before you start loading it down with gear. 345 pounds for the standard version. So that's already a lot of weight that you're pulling before you even load the thing up. I've seen some people out there who've been pulling these trailers and it's pretty clear they've got a five or 600 pound beast that they're towing behind their motorcycles. And to me, that just seemed like something that I am not ready for. I know there's a lot of people that do it, a lot of people enjoy it, and have a really good time with it. But again, for me, as a new trailer owner, I just wasn't quite ready for all of that weight behind my bike. So instead, what I went out and did was I picked up this. This is a Habitude 4 from MSR. It's a four-person tent that I can stand up in, right? It's got a six-foot ceiling, so that works very easily for both my wife and I, because I'm under six feet. So this only weighs 13 and a half pounds, right? So I can very easily put this in the trailer, keep my weight down, and have all the room that we really need when we're setting up a base camp somewhere. Of course, the one drawback to having the tent is we still will be sleeping on the ground, but we have some really nice mats, some four inch mats that work really well. So I don't see that that is gonna be a problem. It hasn't been in the past when we go out on, you know, just long weekend camping trips. So I don't see that it's gonna be an issue when we're going out on these longer trips. Now that we have the trailer, we can also look into maybe a cot. But again, I think we'll just try it with the mats to start off with. So of course, all of this is new to myself and my wife. There's gonna be a lot of practicing, a lot of trial and error before we get things down. We gotta figure out how to load this thing properly. We gotta figure out how to pull it and use it properly. That thousand mile ride back from Tennessee was a big help. I had to get used to the trailer really quickly and was able to do so. All right, but we're gonna have more work that we have to do. The idea with all of this is that I'll be able to head out on a long ride, I'll be able to carry my camping gear, and also we hope we'll be able to fit Kathy's riding gear in here as well. That way when she flies out to meet me somewhere, she doesn't have to worry about carrying all of that with her. At least that's the idea. That's what we're going for. But we'll see how it all works out over the course of this winter, and then, of course, taking it on a trip next year. And if you want to learn more about my trip planning for 2022, I do have a little community. It's free to join, set up. You can get to it on my website, www.livingoffthislab.com. Join that community and you can see the videos that I'm posting on a weekly basis, and I'll be doing that throughout the winter as I'm planning this big trip which is gonna be Route 66 and Utah. And of course I gotta get back home, so I still gotta figure that out yet.